so uh, first thing, I knew I was going to leave with something. Yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> Unfortunately, that one will not be oh, You want sale. it back, I guess. Okay. Yeah. And when you started uh, in 1984 being here, when did you open up this in, particular? In, in the, the end of 87, 88. And you had no idea at the end of 87, 88 that it was obviously going to well, no, grow to this. Even I was doing for fun. I still had my restaurants. I still had, you know, another life, another business. Yeah. And I was doing very well. Just more of a fun thing than a, a business. Right. And in my wildest dream, I never expected this. Well, you are so iconic and well respected and known in this area and worldwide and especially being on Greenwich Ave. So we want to just, we want to understand a little bit more about you, yourself, your vision, how it started, well, how you got here. Well, it's, uh, it started really uh, more just loving watches at the time when, when watches were completely out of favor, you know, in the, in the early 70s through the, through the mid 70s, the, the, the mechanical watches were all being left aside and many of the great brands were almost out of business. In, because the quartz uh, had taken over, they were thin, they were uh, required low maintenance, and all those things. And and many of them, again, it, we could you could buy a beautiful mechanical watch from some of the greatest brands in the world for 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 peanuts. Yeah. And at the time, I was relatively successful in my restaurant. I came across uh, a lot of these mechanical wonders that were just being dumped. Uh, and I never really thought they'd be worth anything. I didn't have that much wisdom, forward wisdom, but I bought them for my own pleasure. And 10 years later, they were back in favor. Little by little, you know, I, I looked like I wasn't completely off <laughs> yeah, look my genius. rocker. Exactly. <laughs> Not quite, but anyway. and. And then I moved to Greenwich and I saw an opportunity. And when did you move to Greenwich? In 84. 1984. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I didn't know, do it right away, but after living here a few years, I saw an opportunity because many of these amazing brands, um, like Vacheron Constantin, Breguet, uh, Audemars Piguet, were not being represented. So it gave me an opportunity to, to jump in. Plus, some of the watches that I had bought for eight, nine hundred dollars, now they was being sold at Antique Warum for eight and ten and twelve thousand dollars. You know, less than ten years later. So that gave me the impetus, and and of course uh, that was a time when Mr. Reagan made us think that we could do nothing wrong. Okay. <laughs> America is the greatest country in the world, and yeah. and all that, and. And the rest is history. I love every minute of it. We were always the first one with most of the small independent. I mean, you talk about Richard Mill, uh, F.P. Jean, Kari Wutelan, and on and on and on. We were the first Frank Mueller dealer. Parmigiani, I sold the first watch that he made. So, in some cases, made fun of us that, oh, Parmigiani, is it cheese, is it this? Michel Parmigiani is an amazing talent. Uh, he, he's just hard to describe how, how talented he is. Most of the amazing restoration in, in the Patek Philippe Museum were done by Michel Parmigiani. So we're talking about real thing, and we were right at the cutting edge to introduce him to our town, to our, our store. And today we have a following all over the world because of it. So. When did you see it grow from, okay, I open up the store and I'm selling watches and jewelry, to when did it become, oh, this is, this is becoming bigger than probably, I thought? Probably, probably six, seven years. Later. I mean, every year it was a little better, but it was still just a little business. Yeah, so in the 90s is when it really started to... Started going and then, you know, 2000. I mean, up to 2008, it was just... Uh, just exponential. Yeah. Yeah. And then it poor, paused for a year. So what happened in a way? We just a pause. Yeah. Nothing. We didn't let go of any employee. We didn't, we didn't change anything. We just... What we do is... You can go and say, okay, no one needs what we do. It's true. But everybody has a celebration. If you take five minutes to talk to anyone, they'll share something special in their life. I just got a promotion. My wife turned 30. My daughter graduated from this. 
it's so much fun. It is so nice because you, 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 you hear the most amazing stories. Incredibly, like, keep talking about luxury. I remind my staff all the time, what is luxury? Luxury is how you handle a problem. The rest is just taking people's money, okay? If you remember that, then you deliver luxury. You know, just doesn't matter if it's a battery, it's a watch strap, whatever it is, make it feel good. Make it that it has value and, and, and listen to the client. Luxury, yeah, luxury is a beautiful thing. But you have to stand behind it, you have to do Did it. you get that? That was, that's like my whole business right there. You just summed up my whole philosophy <laughs> yeah. for the next 30 years. Of and you know what? You'll be very successful. If you understand that basic thing, because really, uh, I can assure you, you can live a very happy life without coming in here. Yeah. Yeah. There's very little you really need. <laughs> right. Be very honest about it, right? Right. But, it feel good, you've been successful, you had something special to celebrate. We got something to tie it to, you know, we got something that will be well received and God forbid is not the item it is, just come right back. Yeah. Either return it or get something else and yeah. And it works. Yeah, it's such a the 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 product of a watch now and especially buying a watch from a store like yours, generational collection. Yeah. And like you just touched on on luxury, it's not the idea of the luxury. It's 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 like you said, deliver, yeah, yeah, do it, deliver yeah. it. And and again, compare and contrast, 32, 33 different brands. Have you have you tried on this? Yeah, you know, have you heard of, of this brand? Without pressure to buy it, just these are real amazing, you know, uh, mechanical wonders. And and and. And if you compare feature and benefit, and, and of course price, because we all have budget, you know, there are amazing watches that you can buy for under a thousand dollars. Okay, a thousand dollars is still money, but you know, with this concept that people go and, and, and pay triple the retail because they have to have that, well, maybe you consider something comparable. Right. At least in quality, yeah. if not prestige of knowledge, you know. And you were the first to bring a lot of these watches to market. How did you? How did you know that that was that's talent? I that's just liked be... it myself. Yeah, it was uh, just preference. Just like I, you know, um, when I I met Mich uh, Kari when he was still working for Parmigiani, I knew the guy had tremendous sensibility. Never mind abilities to 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 do, but but the the, the fine nuances of the difference between. E e an engraving on the dial or not, that makes such a huge difference, you know. Mm, absolutely. That's, that's really what it's all about. Where do you see the future of the industry, the business, your business, where do you see the future going? I believe that there is the brick and mortar, if we understand what we, we're supposed to do for our client is, is very strong. I see, I see it stronger than ever. I, it's all well and good that you can do all your research, and, but there is no substitute for what we do. That's my humble opinion. Yeah. It might be a little subjective, but no, I stand by it. We were talking to Rob it. about that, that, yeah. that brick and mortars for what this is are still absolutely necessary. Yeah, and welcome, completely welcome. Because we don't say no to anything. You have two amazing watchmakers on staff, a goldsmith that can put out a fire like that. You know, it, it, it has value. After all these years, are you, do you still get excited by watches? Oh, I and love food? it. We, we, Rob and I are leaving tomorrow for Florida for the Omega uh, trade show. And then at the end of the month, we're going to Switzerland for all the different brands. We can't wait. What a what a wild ride you've been on. Yeah. And continue to be on. Yeah, especially you've had because so much success. Fun. And, and I'm surrounded with a lot of talent because you can't do it by yourself. We, we employ people that have passion for what they do they have knowledge because, and they continue to want to develop this knowledge because it doesn't stop, you know. And uh, again, this success is, is, believe me, a good part is owed by the team that I have around me. 
So it adds uh, chemistry to the whole thing that has unsurpassed, you know? Yeah. Right. That's it. Well, Roberto, congratulations on an amazing career and continuing yeah. to go. Thank, thank you, you so much for the thank watch. You. I yeah. really appreciate I'm it. I'm glad. Enjoy <laughs> it in good health. Thank you so thank much. You. Pleasure.